All right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah for His Shabbat, His set-apart day. I am Brother Daniel Brown coming to you live from Northeast Colorado. We are SY7 Ministries coming to you with a weekly Sabbath message. And so um, welcome everybody here in, at my house, at our house. And uh, welcome everybody online. Glad to be joining everybody today. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into um, the sermon today. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. And so if you would, bow your heads and let's pray. Amen. Avinu Malkinu, our Father and our King, we bow ourselves down before you in the precious holy name of Yehovah Yeshua, our Messiah. Father in heaven, we thank you, Abba, for your Shabbat, your set-apart day. Shabbat Shalom, Father. We welcome you into this place today. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you, Abba, for your mark upon us. We thank you and praise you, our heavenly Father, for being so good to us. Father, we thank you for this day of rest that we are able to praise and to worship and to rest and to meditate on you to shut off the world <clears throat> and to leave everything at your feet. Father in heaven, we thank you for the technology to be able to come together with all of our mishpaha all around the world. Father in heaven, we pray today in Yeshua's name, Father, that you would be honored and glorified and magnified today. Father in heaven, I pray that you would use me as thy vessel today in Yeshua's name. Father in heaven, I pray that you would touch the cold to my lips, that you would set a guard over the door of my lips, that nothing would proceed out of my lips that's not from you. Father in heaven, may you bless this message that you have laid upon my heart. May you give us ears to hear and eyes to see. May we all be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And Father, take this word and use it and apply it to our hearts and to our lives. Father, get rid of any and all distractions, Father, and help us to be attentive to you today. Father in heaven, we love you and thank you and praise you. Father, in Yeshua's precious name we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> all right. Shabbat Shalom, just in case you're tuning in. So... We're going to go ahead and jump right into this message today. <clears throat> so I started working on this message about a week, week and a half ago, and I was on a Shabbat walk with my youngest boy last week, and I had felt led to do a message preaching on Shabbat, preaching about the Sabbath, what to do, what not to do, and... In my deliver, I was thinking about how I was going to deliver the message, and as I was praying to Yon how to do it and everything, <clears throat> I was hit with two other passages of scriptures. One passage of scripture, Brother James had used a couple weeks ago in his message. Well, it's been about a month ago now, in Revelation too, but. Uh, and I was convicted on my delivery meth method. And that's when it hit me on how, on what Yah wanted me to preach. And, and it goes along with the general theme of what I have been preaching on here the last few months about patience, humility, forgiveness, love long-suffering, the weightier matters of the law, and living like Yeshua did. <clears throat> and I know I've said this in previous messages before, but I'm seeing a lot of it's my way or the highway. I'm right, you're wrong. If you don't believe like I do, then you're on your way to a devil's hell. I'm seeing a lot of that in the Torah realm and in the religion, whether it's Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, it don't matter. I'm seeing a lot of hatred, envy, strife. I'm seeing a lot of 
pride and arrogance and stubbornness in people. There is no humility among the people. There is no love with people. <clears throat> so the center point of this message is going to be focused on Revelation 2 verses 1 through 7 and 1 Corinthians 13. Now I could have used probably half of the Bible in scriptures on all of this. But I don't want it to take away from the central, me the central point message of this. I don't want it to take away from the central, central theme of this message. So my hope and my prayers for everybody to be attentive to take what the Word of Yah says, not what I say, but take everything back to Scripture and see how Yah speaks to you through this message, through His Word. And may we apply it to our hearts and to our lives. And may our lives be pleasing to our Savior and our Master and King. So the title of this message, Have You Left Your First Love? Brother, would you pull up that picture, please? Now there's a two full... Oh, he forgot the picture. Forgot the picture. It's all good. It's all good. I can get it in here by the time we're done. Okay. Yeah, go, if you can, that's fine. <laughs> no worries. So, have you left your first love? There is a twofold part, twofold to this message. How we share Yeshua to others and how our daily lives are, how our actions, our thoughts, our speech, our conduct, everything about us. Does it reflect Yeshua? Does it reflect His character? <clears throat> and the question you might be asking yourself, or you might, or you might, what you might be telling yourself, of course I have not left my first love. I still preach. I still walk in the truth. I still walk in Torah. I still preach with passion. I do everything according to Yah's Word. I do it by the book. I don't eat pork. I keep Shabbat. I keep it holy. I keep it set apart. I go out and tell others about Jesus, about Yeshua. I don't listen to the worldly music. I don't do worldly things. I don't hang out with the wrong crowd. But my question once again, have you left your first love? Does Yeshua still excite you? Okay, so here's the picture. Here's the twofold message of this picture. If you're using Scripture to do this, but not this, you're not preaching the Gospel. Now I want that picture to burn in our thoughts. Because how many times have we beat people over the head with the Scriptures? How many times have we told people that it's either my way or the highway? How many times have we been prideful and arrogant thinking that we have it all right and we beat someone down with the Word of Yah instead of putting our arms around people like Yeshua did? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Have we left our love in that regard? Now this message has really challenged me this last week of being a husband, a father, a pastor, a man of Yah to stop, to seek Yah diligently and ask Him, am I walking like I should be? Am I preaching like I should be? Especially those around me that are constantly all around me, my family. Or am I just sounding brass? Am I just whistling in the wind? Am I letting my flesh get in the way because somebody won't listen to me or somebody won't do something? Am I getting angry and bitter and frustrated? And there have been times that I've had to hit my knees and ask God to forgive me and repent so that I can love like Yeshua loves and tell and be an example for others to live by. Now I have some questions I'm going to ask you all today and I've asked myself the same thing to all of these questions. 
and I encourage you to try to write down some of them if, if any of them speak, if any of them stick out to you. Do we get excited about Yeshua? Do you still have the same joy and love and excitement about telling others about what Yah has done for you? <clears throat> has my love for Yeshua lessened over the years? Are we just going through the motions or are we still excited to serve Him? Do we weep for the lost? Do we weep for our lost family members, friends and loved ones, those near and dear to us, those that are across the street? The mission field is not inside these four walls. It's right outside the front and back door. That's our mission field, wherever Yah has placed you. Bloom where you are planted and go out and tell the gospel to a lost and dying world outside of your four walls. Do we have a root of bitterness inside of us? <clears throat> Do you or can you go hours or days without having more than a passing thought of our Savior? Do you not have a strong desire to spend time with Him? Do you have a strong desire to spend time with Him, to spend time in prayer, to spend time reading His Word, studying His Word, getting to know Him intimately like a husband and wife know themselves? Do you not have a hunger for the Word? Is Bible reading more of a chore than, it, than just a mark off on your to-do list every day? Or do you enjoy reading the scriptures and studying the word and applying it to your life and praying over it? Is your extra time <clears throat> spent doing worldly things other than godly things? Spending time in prayer is a burden and a duty rather than a delight. Private prayer in worship is almost non-existent. It's cold and dry. Your heart toward Messiah is cold and indifferent. It's not as tender as it once was. You're not as easily moved by the Word, and you rarely talk of spiritual things. Your obedience and service are motivated and fueled by expectation of others or a desire to impress others more than it is for the passion of Yeshua. Your service <clears throat> for Messiah and others is motivated, motivated by a sense of duty or obligation. I have to do this. I, Mishpaha, we get to do this. The creator of this world has chosen us to live for him. We get to serve him. We don't have to. We get the privilege and the honor to, to know the creator of this world and to praise and to worship him and to tell others about him. You are formal, rigid, and uptight about spiritual things rather than joyful and winsome. You are critical or harsh toward those who are doctrinally off base or living in sin. That picture right there. Instead of putting your arm around people and saying, hey, I love you and I tell you this, Yeshua died for your sins, or brother, sister, that's wrong. Don't be doing that. You enjoy secular songs, movies, and books more than songs or reading material that point you to Messiah. I did a message, it's probably been a couple years ago, the wolf that you feed, and the one that you feed will ultimately overtake you, whether it's the good wolf or the bad wolf, which one do you feed? You prefer the company of people who don't love Messiah to the company and fellowship of those who do. You are more interested in recreation, entertainment, and having fun 
than in cultivating intimacy with Messiah through worship, prayer, the Word of God, and, and other fellowship with like-minded believers. You justify small areas of disobedience or compromise. You have been drawn back into sin habits that you put off when you were a young believer. You are not grieved by sin. It's no big deal to you. You are consistently allured by certain sins. You haven't killed that part of your life. It is still holding on to you. What 30 pieces of silver are you willing to hold on to? That sin that you're willing to hold on to to keep you from having that deep, intimate relationship with Yeshua. You rarely give sacrificially to Yehovah's work. So with these questions, I want to read the two passages of scriptures that this message focuses on. Let's first turn to Revelation chapter number 2, verses 1 through 7. To the angel of the ecclesia of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of your of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and they and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from when you have fallen, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass, or a claiming symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love's, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it is all it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. <clears throat> but when that which is perfect has come, when that which is in part will be done away, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but when, but then, face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. With the questions that I asked and with the two passages of scriptures I just read, the next question that I have for each and every one that I had to ask myself, have you left your first love 
the key word in Revelation chapter 2, verse number 4. Yeshua said that we left. We have not lost. We left. We departed from our first love. Think about when you first gave your life over to Yeshua. How was it? You had a zeal. You had a hunger. You had a thirst. You wanted to go out and tell others about Yeshua, what He did for you. Do we still do that today? Now, as we grow, we're, we are to mature. We are to grow stronger in the Lord. We are to grow deeper into an intimate relationship with Him. But we should never leave that first, that first love, Mishpaha, of what Yeshua did for us, how He pulled us out of sin, out of darkness. We should always be willing to go out and to tell others about His love and that He is the only way, truth, and the life and that no man goes up unto the Father but through Him. So have we left our first love? Are we just going through the motions? It's Shabbat. Okay, I need to do all this, have all this done. Okay, can't do anything this day. And I'm not going to lie. I've been there. I've done it. It's easy to get stuck in a rut. It's easy just to go along with the motions. It's easy not to be excited, especially after a hard week and you go into Shabbat and it just and it rolls right into Shabbat. I've had those Shabbats where it's been rough. But you know, we need to, and my wife, I love my wife dearly. She says we can't let our circumstances control our faith and control our attitudes. And that's been, for me, that's been a hard one. But I praise Yah, by His grace and mercy, I'm getting better. So with that, I want to back up a little bit and I want to give a little background on the church of Ephesus and why the church of Ephesus had become loveless. And so I'll be reading some commentary from David Guzik, G-U-Z-I-K. Ephesus, this was a famous city in the ancient world with an equally famous church. Paul ministered in Ephesus for three years. Aquila and Priscilla with Apollos served there with Paul. And Paul's close associate, Timothy, was with him. They worked in Ephesus together. According to strong and consistent historic tradition, the Apostle John also ministered there. Surely it was a great place of privilege and of great preaching. This Ephesus was a great city. This was also world famous as a religious, cultural, and economic center of the region. Ephesus had the notable Temple of Diana, a fertility goddess worshipped with immoral sex. This tremendous temple to Diana in Ephesus was regarded as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was supported by 127 pillars. Each pillar was 60 feet tall, and it was adorned with great sculptures. The temple of Artemis was also a major treasury and bank of the ancient world, where merchants, kings, and even cities made deposits and where their money could be kept safe under the protection of deity. Ephesus was a stronghold of Satan. Here, many evil things, both superstitious and satanic, were practiced there. Books containing formula for sorcery and other ungodly and forbidden arts were plentiful in that city. <clears throat> it was also a city that sat along the sea. It was a very huge port lots of business coming in and going out of Ephesus. Revelation 2, verses 2 through 3, I know your works. Yeshua looked at His church, and He knew its condition. It was no mystery to Him. There may be sin or corruption hidden in a congregation, but it's not hidden to Yeshua. He would say the same thing to us today, both as individuals and as a congregation. I know your works. Yeshua 
is everywhere. He is omnipotent. He knows your every thought. He knows what you're doing secretly and in public. We cannot hide anything from Yah. He knows everything. So what are you doing in your spare time? Are you doing things that would glorify and edify your body, that would glorify and edify Yah? Or are we doing things that are going to destroy our bodies and bring shame unto Yah's holy name? There are also working believers who do not approach to laboring, yet a lifetime of such work as their as theirs would not exhaust a butterfly. Now, when a man works for Messiah, he should work with all of his might. Do all that you do for his honor and for his glory and for your praise as we are working for the Adon. Whether it's taking care of a child, cleaning dishes, or laboring for an employer, do it all for Yah's honor and glory. Because remember, he sees, hears, and knows all. Your works, your labor, your patience. Yeshua knew what this church did right. They worked hard for the Adon and they had godly endurance. Patience is the great ancient Greek word hupomoni, which means steadfast endurance. In this sense, the church in Ephesus was rock solid. You cannot bear those who are evil. The Ephesian church pursued doctrinal purity. And Paul warned the Ephesians in Acts 20, verses 29 through 31. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch. And remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. You have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Also the Ephesian church continued doing these things without becoming weary. They showed a godly perseverance that, would, that we should imitate. But all out, by all outward appearances, this was a solid church that worked hard. They had great outreach, and they protected the integrity of the gospel. Revelation 2.4, what Yeshua had against the church at Ephesus. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Yeshua used a sobering word, nevertheless, which means despite all of that, they were doctrinally pure. They hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. They went out and told others about Yeshua. Yeshua took into full account all the good in the Ephesian church, yet despite all that, he had something against them. Nevertheless means that that all the good in the Ephesian church did not cancel out the bad Yeshua is about to describe. You have left your first love. Despite all the good in the Ephesian church, there is something seriously wrong. They have left, not lost, their first love. They once had a love that they did not have anymore. This can be described as a definite and sad departure. The distinction between leaving and losing is important. Something cannot be lost quite by accident, but leaving is a deliberate act. Though it may not happen suddenly as well, when we lose something, we don't know where to find it. But when we leave something, we know where to find it. Though they had left their first love, everything looked great on the outside. If you would have attended a service in the church of Ephesus, you might have thought this is a happening place to be. But they, but they are doing so much <clears throat> and they really guard the truth. At the same time, you might have had a vague, uneasy feeling, yet it would probably be hard to pin it down. It wasn't hard for Yeshua to see the problem, even though everything probably looked wonderful on the outside. The problem was serious. Without love, all is vain. 
No wonder Yeshua said, Nevertheless, I have this against you. No church has no reason for being a church when she has no love within her heart or when that love grows cold. Lose love, lose all, as Charles Spurgeon has says. Left your first love, what love did they leave? As believers, we are told to love God and to love one another. Did they leave their love for God? Did they leave their love for one another? Probably both are in mind because the two loves go together. You can't say you love God and not love his family. You can't really love his family without loving him first. The Ephesian church was a working church. Sometimes a focus on working for Yeshua will eclipse a love relationship with him. We can put what we do for Yeshua before who we are in him. We can leave Yeshua in the temple. <clears throat> I love what it said there. We can get so caught up with preaching sermons. We can get so caught up with keeping Shabbat the right way as he tells us to. But have we left that first love? Have we left the love that Yeshua showed us? The excitement? Are we doing it out of our heart? Or are we doing it because, well, my mom and dad served the Lord and they went to church on Saturday or Sunday. They served the Lord this day. And by golly, this is the way that I'm going to do it because it runs in my family and that's what I'm going to do. It's, it becomes an obligation. You get in that rut. We raise and we train our children to love the Lord thy God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. We teach them to do right. For when they are old, they will not depart from it. But once they're out on their own, guess what? They have to develop that relationship with Yeshua on their own. We as parents have to let them go and give them over to Yah and let them, by Yah's grace and mercy, keep them that they will make the right choices and the right decisions in their lives, that they will choose to have that relationship with Yah. But we must first teach them. The children of Israel taught the next generation how to love the Lord thy God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and, and how to love people. And when we don't do that, Mishpaha, the gen it stops. <clears throat> it starts with the leaders. It starts with the husbands. It starts with the men of the house. It starts with the leaders of a congregation teaching by them following your example. Mishpaha, it's on us. It's on the men. It's on the leaders. It's on the pastors on how we live our lives teaching the next generation and teaching those who are in your congregation. The church of Ephesus, they had everything. Just like America, we have everything here. We live a comfortable lifestyle. We have the entertainment. We have everything at our fingertips. We have shopping. We have entertainment. We have everything right here. Are we replacing our love in our lives that we're supposed to have with Yeshua with the entertainment of this world? Have we left that first loved and replaced it with the things of this world? Everything looks good on the outside, but on the inside, something was growing cold and something was growing hard and it was their heart. They were going through the motions. They didn't have that fire that they once had. Is it, am I describing anybody? How on fire for Yah are we willing to be? How much work are we willing to do for Yah? Are we willing to go around the world to preach the gospel? 
How can we do that when we can't, can't even go out our front door and go tell our neighbors about Yeshua? Yeah, they're going to hate you for it. They're probably not going to listen because they're in a rut. They're going about their normal business, but that should not stop us from going and telling about the love of Yeshua. And I'm preaching to myself more than I am anybody else. The church of Ephesus, they still hated evil. Just as believers, we hate evil. We're to hate evil. They had patience. They hated the deeds of the Lit Nicolaitans, yet they labored for Yeshua's name. But they had left something. They had left the love. Doing it from here. Are we doing it because we have to? Or are we doing it because we want to, because we get to? Mishpah, it's always been about the heart. Nothing else. Circumcise your hearts and follow Yeshua. Are we lacking love? Has your love grown cold? Are we as believers just going through the motions? Are we doing it because we have to? And are you motivated by the love of Yeshua? John 15, 16. This is a verse that I added after James put this together. John 15, 16. Let's start in verse number 9, John 15, 9. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. Key verse here. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. <clears throat> Mishpaha, we get to serve Yeshua. We get to serve Yah. He chose us. He, we did not choose Him. When, when I gave my life over to Yeshua back in August of 2011, I was sitting in a pew in the back row listening to a sermon. I wasn't searching for Yeshua. I was just doing what I was taught to do, sitting, listening to the preaching. It wasn't until that moment that Yah called me out and set me apart. And now that I know that I know that I know that I'm one of His because the world hates me, the world does not entice me anymore. I want to follow Yah with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and I want to tell the world about Yeshua. I don't want to hold anything back. What is holding any one of us back from doing this? Is it a job? Is it a career? Is it your family? Is it because you're a coward? I've dealt with all of this, so I can say it because I know. And when Yah revealed all of this to me, I hit my knees and asked for forgiveness. Because I want to be so on fire for Him that the whole world sees and knows that I am a child of the King. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about jobs. 
I don't care about houses. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. When we get called out, when we get set apart, we are commanded to become obedient as obedient children unto Him. And as we grow, we mature, we get older, we start learning a lot more things. Our love for Him should grow. But as our love grows and we draw closer to Him and we become more seasoned in our walk, we don't do the things that we used to do. Do the way we present the gospel, do the way we tell others about Yeshua, does it become harsh? Does it become beating somebody over the head with the word of Yah? Do we become as sounding brass where nobody listens to us even though you try so hard to get your point across? Guilty. Again, like I said, I'm preaching to myself on this one. Whoever is listening to this message today, whether you worship on Saturday, Sunday, or every day of the week, if we don't have the love of Yeshua, if we have left our first love, and this is how we present the gospel in our daily lives, and not this way, we all need to hit our knees and ask Yeshua to forgive us and to have mercy on us. Yah says, Yeshua says in Revelation, repent and return quickly or He'll take His candlestick away from us. 1 Peter 5.8 Actually, let's go to Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. Thus says Yehovah, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, and all things exist, says Jehovah. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. In 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. There is not one of us that is above sin, that is not above reproach, that is not above this happening to them. It can happen to any one of us. That's why we're to be sober, to be sober-minded, be on our guard to make sure that this doesn't happen, that the love of Yeshua in our hearts and in our lives stays afresh. That's why we need to read. That's why we need to study. That's why we need to praise. That's why we need to worship. That's why we need to spend time with our Savior, our Creator, Start your days off with Him. Start with prayer. Start with reading Yah's Word. Saturate our minds and our hearts with Yah's Word. Get your focus on Him for the day. Because if we don't, our love will grow cold. Repent quickly, verse number 5, before it's too late. If your love has grown cold. I want to reiterate this, Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Husbands, pastors, teachers, leaders, it starts with us and then women, wives, those who are standing by your husband's side, those who are raising and training the children, it starts in the home. 
It's not up to your pastors or your teachers or leaders to teach and to raise these children. Parents, it's your jobs to teach them the love of Yeshua. And if you don't, the world's definitely going to teach them how not to. But if we don't teach them the proper way how to love Yeshua, then who will? It takes a lot of work. Mishpaha, we cannot be prideful and arrogant thinking that we have it all figured out, thinking that we're above sin, we're above reproach, that we are above becoming loveless because it can happen. Matthew 24, 13, Yeshua said, For in the last days, for the love of many shall grow cold. Heartless people, then sin is going to abound. We need to be on our guard. We need to be like Yeshua. Let's turn to John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Maybe. Another passage of scripture I added. I didn't have enough, so. John 8, 1 through 11. And everyone went to his own house, but Yeshua went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moshe in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Yeshua stooped down and wrote in the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him cast, throw the first stone, a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. Yeshua was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Yeshua had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are your, those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Adon. And Yeshua said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Yeshua spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And then with that, I want to turn to Jude 1, verses 22 and 23. And I want to clear a couple things up. <clears throat> Jude 22 and 23. And some having compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. I've said this in previous messages before. Samuel, come here. I need your assistance. I need your help. I was just literally thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> some people, some babies in Messiah... Believers who don't know Yah, you need to go to them. You need to do this. Yeshua loves you. He's here for you. He can take away the sin of the world. You can live a life free unto Him if you put your faith and trust in Him. And others, and others, if they've been a believer for a while and they know better, you need to yank them out of the fire, pull them, because you love them. But ultimately, thank you, son. Ultimately, are you doing it from here? Or are you doing it to make, your, to make a name for yourself? Yah loves the humble. 
Yah loves the humble. He loves the brokenhearted. He hates pride. He hates arrogance. He hates stiff-necked people. Remember the Pharisee and the publican. The publican smote his chest and said, Adon, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the Pharisee said, I'm glad I'm not like that publican down there. I fast twice a week. He was lifted up with pride. He didn't have the love of Yeshua. He didn't have the humility. 1 Peter 1.16 says, be holy. It is written, Be holy for I, Yeshua, Messiah, am holy. Yeshua was humble. He was humble even, and He was obedient even unto death. Are we willing to lay our lives down for the same? Do we have enough love in our lives to, sh to show and to tell others of Yeshua and to lay our lives down for them? May Mishpaha, may we never, never forget the love of Yah. May we never take our eyes off of the one who first loved us. And may we continue to put him first in our lives individually, our marriages, our jobs, our relationships, and those who are watching who have congregations. May Yah be the center of your ministry. And may it never be about you, but all about Him. Everything. May we never replace the motive of love for Yeshua and others with religious do's and don'ts. Did you have something? No, I was just remembering something. Okay, okay. Let's make sure that all that we are doing is coming from our heart. Now you may ask, I want to bring this to a close. I need to look up something right quick. Give me a second. Sorry. Now, how can we get back to Yah? How can we get back to His ways? How can we get back to that love that we once experienced? It says in Revelation 2.5, Repent and return. Let's read Revelation 2.5. Revelation 2.5 Remember therefore from whence you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let's turn to Luke 15 and give an illustration of it. Luke 15, starting in verse number 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeying to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. <clears throat> then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough 
and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put, on, put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and he, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years we have been serving you. I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat, that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots and killed the fatted calf, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost, and is now found. A beautiful parable of what the prodigal son leaving, having it, leaving the love, and coming back. All you have to do is remember from whence you have fallen. Ask God to forgive you. Repent and do the first works. Do not let the love of God and the love for others grow faint because you have gotten so busy fighting the battles of life. Here's what you do. You put Yah first in your day. You pray, you read, you saturate yourself with His presence. You take the time, you sit still as Yah tells us. Sit still and know that I am Yah. Sit still and see the salvation of Yehovah. Psalm 46.10 Take time to absorb the love and presence of God each and every day. Take time and pray and to be quiet and to sit still and to receive Yah's word from Him to you. Take time to be refreshed by reading the word of God each and every day. Yes, Samuel? So, you've been talking about love, but you haven't mentioned its root word. Um, agape or um, it means affection, goodwill, love, brotherly love. And as in the parable of the son, the particle son, the father gave him brotherly love like he never left at all. Yeah. And I like personally like how when he said he was dead but he is now alive. He was lost but he is now found. We were lost. But Yah came out of the 90s. Of, of the 90s. He left the 99 for that one. And at any one point in time, we were that one. <clears throat> it's easy to get caught up with everything of this world. Trust me, I know. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to be aware of. But Mishpaha, whatever is going on in the world, that should not let that deter us from loving Yah, loving others, and telling others about Yeshua Messiah. It's easy to let everything bother you. It's easy to just go through the motions on a daily basis. 
Mishpaha, my wife and I have been talking a lot this week about people who have made bad decisions, good decisions, whether it's older, the older generation or the younger generation, different lifestyles, different classes of people. Mishpaha, we all have a choice to better ourselves. We all have a choice to wake up and say, I'm going to serve Yah today. I'm not going to let anything bother me. I'm going to live my life fully for Him. Scripture to go along with this is Colossians chapter number 3. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians 3, 23 through 25. And whatever you do, do it hardly as to the Adon and not of men, knowing that the Adon you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Adon Messiah. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Make the choice today to put Yah first. Serving Yah should never become boring. It should never become monotonous. It should be exciting just as the day as it was when you gave your life over to Him when Yeshua called you out. We should be excited to tell others about Yeshua and what Yah continues to do for us each and every day. Each and every day He allows us to wake up. He gives us breath. There are 86,500 seconds in a day. Are we using our time wisely to share the love of Yeshua to others? Or are we letting the things of the world control and dictate our lives? Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men that others may see and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In the last couple of scriptures, 1 John chapter number 2. I love the book of 1 John. There is so much meat in the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse number 1. My little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins... If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Messiah the righteous, and He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for also for the whole world. Now by this we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not within Him. And I'm in the wrong chapter. 1 John 3. My apologies. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, we are now we are the children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed we shall be like Him. We shall see him as he is, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. <coughs> Jumping back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And 1 John chapter number 4. (coughs) 
going to read all of 1 John chapter number 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Yeshua Messiah has come into the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Yeshua Messiah has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love, that we, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Yeshua is the Son of God, God abides in Him, and He in God. And we have known and believed the love of God that believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us this day in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. The love of God, the love of Yeshua. Let's not let our love grow cold. Repent, return back to your first love. Remember Yah all the days of your life. Serve Him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. The love of God is pure. It is holy. It is righteous. Walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, as the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 5. And as we read earlier, Yah loves each and every one of us. He loves His creation. May our love never grow cold, and may we f never fall into a rut of serving Him, becoming monotonous, becoming bold, becoming dull and boring. But serve Him with excitement on what He's going to do in your life. Do not listen to Satan and to the lies. Test the spirits. Live for him on a daily basis. Let's not be like the church of Ephesus and let your love grow cold. Let's not beat people over the head. 
but show the true love of Yeshua Messiah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.